So hello to everyone. I'm in a special uh, place today in Brussels. The pleasure to share this uh, presential EasyChem chat with Tony McLean from Australia, Michel Slama from France, and Antoine Vierbaron from France. And the uh, topic today will be a little bit on ultrasound. Few questions, hope to be have controversial response from our audience. And the question, the first question would be, um, we have now in the era of uh, pocket ultrasound, especially in the ICU, because we are using more and more ultrasound. Will ultrasound in the future will be our new stethoscope? So we'll use everyday amplified echo ultrasound for all patients. I start from Antoine, and then of course Michel and Tony will follow. Yes, thank uh, Fabio, my good friends. <laughs> uh, I am not really convinced because. Uh, Usually people think that because this is small, you can use it very easily, uh, at least without any training. And I, I, I think that the main issue is that, uh, especially that you have to be trained, uh, even for small and pocket uh, echo machine, uh, if you don't do that, uh, you will have uh, big, big mistakes and big issues for the patients. When you learn uh, to use stethoscopes, usually you are trained at the bedside by your mentor. So we have to uh, apply the same process if we want to adequate, adequately use this kind of machine. So I am in between. I am not really convinced. <laughs> it's funny because when you, you look at the young intensivist, they always start with the echo examination. And after that... They take the stethoscope, and it's a complementary, complementary technique now. <laughs> I mean, the stethoscope. Not the and, first. Do, and do they trust the echo or the stethoscope? They, they do first the echo most of the time. That's incredible. Well, let's be real. You know, in this day and age, you could work in an ICU without a stethoscope. But you couldn't work an ICU without ultrasound or an echocardiogram. And if you had to ditch the stethoscope, and I'm sure a lot of people have, thrown it aside today, what would be different, really? So if you have to decide between both, so you take the echo machine. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that you agree that, of course, you need the device, but you need adequate training, both. So which is, of course, the right way to use the ultrasound. Yes. Now, the second point would be, we use ultrasound, and of course, uh, the main use of ultrasound, and not the only one, is echocardiography for the heart. But are we moving more and more, and more to a kind of full-body ultrasound approach, either point of care or diagnostic approach? Tony? Oh, definitely, and I think it's happened already before our eyes. I don't know about your intensive care units, but how many put, people put in central lines without ultrasound nowadays? I'm hardly anybody we would automatically turn around and do a lot of our own leg Dopplers. If we were concerned, it's the weekend, you can't get a stenographer in to do it. Uh, lung ultrasound, I don't think we use nearly as much as we should, but it's only because of laziness. Uh, I think it's well on the way. Uh, we don't really have to even push for it, it's happening. And of course, echocardiography, how do you look after a sick patient without an echo, is beyond me. It is not possible to do, uh, not to do a, a, a lung ultrasound when you have patient in respiratory distress uh, at that time. Mm. So now, of course, you, the, the first thing that you will do is uh, to, to, to put the probe on, on the chest, just to check if there is a pneumothorax, if there is a large pleural effusion or whatever. So that's really the, 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 the first step of uh, our management of patients with uh, respiratory uh, failure. No, uh, of course I agree, but once again, my good friends, they are in a magic world, ideal world, which is not the true life, because I think you missed two points. The first one is that we lack studies explaining how to integrate the art aspect with the lung aspect and so on. So to put everything together at the end to have the right diagnostic and the right management. And you miss another point, which is in touch with my previous comment, which is that, okay, it seems to be very easy because this is focused, this is simple, but once again, you have to be trained. Uh, this is not because you take a probe and that you put the probe on the chest that you are able to analyze the lung, the B lines, the A lines, the consolidation, and to, to have the right diagnosis. So definitively, I agree with you, 
but there is a big challenge to, in front of us. And I think that the statement from the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, uh, very soon published in Intensive, Intensive Care Medicine Journal, will give some guidance uh, to uh, organize uh, uh, more courses for training and so on. I have a question on that point. So imagine that you were moving towards, with training towards this full body ultrasound. Do you think that there will be a doctor who will be able to be uh, expert in all the field of the body, the brain, the vessels, the heart, the lung, the body, the abdomen, or there will be a champion for you know specific patterns for some organs? In the Antoine uh, ICU, there will be Antoine for the echocardiography, and someone else from the brain, someone else from the abdomen. How do you see that? That's the key point, and that's the key question. I do not have the answer, and this is really my issue. I think it's going to be a case of not everybody doing everything. I think some people, for example, lung ultrasound is now a routine part of our echocardiogram. When you would do a lung ultra, uh, echocardiogram, we'd automatically look at the lungs as part of the echo examination. But I, I do take the point that I think it's going to be hard for people to be really good at everything, abdo abdomen as well as uh, brain and all those sorts of things. But then maybe, maybe we're being too ambitious. Maybe we don't really have to worry too much about that. We really have to worry about those parts which we as physicians can deal with dramatically at the moment, which is, from my way of thinking, vascular, heart and lungs. So, so for me, it's mandatory today to teach to the young intensivist how to use ultrasounds for doing some uh, uh, chest uh, uh, evaluation, abdominal evaluation, transcranial evaluation, and they have to have a minimal skills for that. I'm sure that it is really useful at the bedside. And I think that for cardiac, uh, ultrasound is a little bit different because of course they should have a minimal skills but it's much more complicated sometimes. And then I think that at that, at that point, you, we have to have some uh, expert in, at least in each team, we should have one expert on echocardiography. But we don't need expert on lung, don't need expert on abdominal, don't need expert on transcranial, because I think that every intensivist should have a minimal skills on that. No, but because you said that, maybe because you do not understand the beauty of the world critical care ultrasonography, <laughs> and you are especially expert for the heart, but I think you could imagine and assume it's the same for the brain, for the lung, and so on. So I think this is the goal that we have to reach. I don't know when we will do and if we will do, but don't say... Uh, it's easy, everyone has to do. Of course, I agree that uh, it's a fantastic device to, to have at the bedside for our usual practice, but we have very uh, a big challenge to, to put everyone comfortable with that technique. And Antoine, do you think um, we're aiming at the wrong audience, though? It strikes me, you know, that uh, we're talking about intensive care physicians, but maybe if we're going to be really serious, we should go back and teach all the medical students how to use ultrasound mm -hmm. and let them start off with the basic of ultrasound, then as they get through their training, take it into any particular field. We're trying to teach people who have ignored it for years and maybe they're the wrong group. Maybe we should go right back to the beginning and spend our time with medical students. I can maybe, because of the matter of time, again have another question for you which is, of course, uh, ultrasound is important to understand, you know, the pathophysiology, follow up the patient, so it's important a diagnostic tool. And, of course, you know, many people say that each monitoring should save patient's life itself, which is a little bit weird assumption, but still, do we have, uh, you know, uh, more evidence, if I can say that, about protocolized care based on uh, ultrasound? And if so, which is the frequency of the examination you should do to have this protocol, protocol, protocolized care based on ultrasound? i start from Antoine. Yes, first of all, uh, I will say, uh, do we have, uh, let's say, randomized controlled trial about the effect of antibiotics to save lives uh, in case of septic shock? I think we do not have. While this is something that we do, of course, and unfortunately, every day in, in many patients. So I will say this is the same uh, thinking. 
And, and regarding the use of something that I know especially well, which is the use of echocardiography, I think we start to have more and more studies demonstrating or even only suggesting that applying some protocol uh, to have a systematic evaluation of heart function in patients with RDS or septic shock, you may improve prognosis. If, if at, at the bedside you have a patient under mechanical ventilation who um, becomes uh, in very bad clinical situation and uh, having a respiratory failure and just you put the probe on the chest and you find a pneumothorax. So it will help a lot for, 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 for the management of the patient. You don't need to know if putting the probe to diagnose a pneumothorax will save the life or not. Of course, it will. Have you ever seen a good study on the use of pulse oximetry in saving lives in the ICU? No. <laughs> I don't think there is one. Every one of our patients has a pulse oximetry on every minute of the hour, every hour of the day. So I'm not looking for things that are obvious. No, no of course, but um, the reasons why I made the question is that uh, it's not the echo per se, but it's pro protocolized care based uh. on a monitoring, which means that you change your therapeutic strategies because the monitoring is actively implemented in a management. It's not just looking at ultrasound per se, because I agree with you, it won't make su such sense. No, I think it's a key question, because if we forget the, the thing uh, we can save or we can't save lives, when you do the echo, lung ultrasonography, echocardiography, whatever, you have to ask yourself to have a question. First, why I do the exam? Second, you have a, a formal conclusion, what I... Uh, did fine, and finally you have the conclusion of the conclusion, which is the adaptation of the treatment. What, what do I change in the, in the treatment? And if you answer, for instance, I change nothing, this is also an answer. I mean, you know? So I think this is a very important process to have, and you're absolutely right that we need to protocolize our approach to have the report, the conclusion, and the adaptation. And which is very important is to have a follow-up of the patients with the echo ex when you do echo examination. You don't have to do only one examination and then moving uh, far away from the unit, but you have to, to, to stay at the bedside, to sleep with the patient, <laughs> and to check if, for example, your uh, volume uh, infusion improved the clinical situation. If not, you have to do again echo just to, to check why the uh, infusion did not improve the clinical situation of the patient. So, so it, it's very important to do a follow-up. Uh, um, and if it doesn't patient. work, we can call you, Michelle, at 2 o'clock in the morning to show you the echo, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a final question for the three of you. Is there anything you will send as a message as the future of ultrasound for critically ill patients? Any message, uh, implementation of technology, whatever you see as uh, something important to the next years? I would say that um, the people who take up ultrasound, and particularly echocardiography, are really rewarded in performing it on their patients. And that should be the attraction for them. We shouldn't have to persuade them to do it because of statistics or whatever. People who do it, the majority of them will identify that, in fact, they give a lot of benefit to their patients. And I think that's what we should encourage people to say, hey, this is fun, this is really interesting, and believe it or not, it really improves patient management. I think that the future is a technology, so I think that what we need now is to have a tracking. To, we have to track the flow automatically, we have to track the, the words automatically, and then when, you have, when we will have all these technologies which track all these a movement of the heart or the flows, at that time we will apply uh, 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 artificial intelligence and it would be possible to have some like automatic protocols in front of one patient and one clinical situation. Uh, as you know, uh, I am 100% convinced that for instance echocardiography is a true uh, device for hemodynamic monitoring. But if we re really want to convince everyone, we need to go a step uh, uh, more, which is really to more integrate the study into the clinical scenario of our patient. And especially, I would really love to 
go into the room to plug my probe on the monitor to just check the heart, to record the study on the monitor and to go back. Uh, and maybe uh, a few hours later, another doctor will be able to review my study and to do the same study just to compare. And for that, it could be very good to have the interface, which is the monitor uh, acting as an echo machine. For me, it could be the ideal future. So I have to thank Tony, Michel, uh, Antoine. It's our first ECGM chat when I have someone close to myself, not in Zoom. And it would be a pleasure. Thanks a lot for your uh, nice and so thoughtful, take, take your mask. Yeah, of course, comments <laughs> <laughs> about ultrasound. And I hope to have you again in the next EasyChem chat. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.